great to be back. It's great to have you back with us. With you. Thanks to the brewery, Fresh Carlton Draft. Yes. It's been too long, everybody. Hopefully you're bared up OK <laughs> through these extraordinary times. These two are here. Got a massive show tonight. Dale Thomas and Gillan McLaughlin both going to join us on the show. How lovely it is, boys, to see it's you two see you, fine, mate. fine gentlemen again. It's great to be back inside a pub, even if it's a fake one. That's good. You know what I mean? It's good. <laughs> point. Just, 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 just that makes me good. feel like I'm in my natural habitat. It's very real. But, you know, it's a bit to get through. There's a lot to chew and chat our way through tonight. Well, Gil coming up very yep, soon. Yep. Uh, we're trying to dial him in right now. Before we do, though, um, it's, it, it's been tough times. We're all coming out of hibernation. Yep, yep. And there's lessons to be learned. Uh, we're all pretty green. We've probably forgotten how to operate. But there are pitfalls. Uh, have a look at this. Uh, even our Prime Minister got himself in trouble today. Have a look. He's gone on to... He's making a very, very important policy announcement. Okay. And he steps on a guy's front lawn. Oh. Uh, and the guy inside the house is not particularly happy about it. There'd been no um, figures that had come across at that. Hey guys, I've just reseeded that. Yeah. <laughs> sure, let's just move back from there. <laughs> Sorry, mate. All good. That's all good. Thanks. So it's the project that's now. That's what it's all about. Hey, good on him. No, Welcome that's... back. There are problems out there. there that's are. why I love Australian politics. That's why I love this country. Good on the PM. I've just reseeded that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's funny. Good on the PM for recognising Sorry. the press potentially done the wrong thing. He's obviously a grass man, uh, the Prime Minister, because he realised right. that was wild a buffalo, and that's about six that's... weeks into its growth phase, and that is a very, very, very yeah. tender time. That's cooch time. to my eye. That's cooch. <laughs> it's a Walter yeah, it's buffalo. A, if they've ever I've seen a Walter buffalo, that was it, and it was at a very critical it's, time. It's cooch with a bit of Bermuda. A bit of Bermuda. <laughs> you don't know what you're Just on behalf of the audience, are you, what's that Walter Buffalo? So Walter Buffalo, you're one of the hardiest... A, you can look at that and go, that's Oh, no one. question about it. Yeah, you know, fine, <laughs> fine growing grass. Hey, we're almost back in footy mode. Uh, we're a week away. Hey, this we're time, off to a fly. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this time... You've missed us, haven't you? This time next week, uh, there'll be footy being played. So it's time to start reacquainting ourselves with the nuts and bolts of the game. Yeah, the, sure. The ladder. It's, how long has it been since you've actually... I couldn't tell you who's on top. Right, let's Rabble have a look. look. There it is after round one. That's the actual mm. ladder after they round one. They can't be beaten. That is it's a good start. A commanding lead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're way out in front. Um, yeah. Carl, Murray, a bit high. you're, yeah, a, you're a, you know, a man of history. Historically, if you're not in the eight uh, in June, yep, yep. Uh, it's hard. To, it's hard to play. <laughs> it's hard to play finals. Yeah. Is the eight set? I think is the eight, eight set. I think the eight, eight is. Set. I think the eight oh, set. Yeah, yeah. So how have you two been going? Have you been bearing up okay? I mean, we've hardly seen one another through this time. Are you okay? A, you two, been, how have you been yeah, going? Isolation's been great. In isolation, what I wanted to do was uh, I set my heart on it, watching some of the more recent Carlton premierships. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, my VCR machine wasn't working. <laughs> oh, that's and funny. I had to settle for it. It's taken him four <laughs> minutes to move. Is it going to be... Is it, is, is, tell me this. Is, is, is the grand final day October? I believe uh, it's in yeah, October. October, October yeah, it is. Wow, so Carlton's going to see some September action. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be back. Oh, it's mate, just, hey, you come back. By the way, just, just knocking the cobwebs off a couple. Yeah, 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 yeah hold on. By the way, yeah. it's been about ten weeks since we've seen you, right? How is, how is the child oh. still there? It's bigger. I reckon it's grown. Can you see it, can you? <laughs> it's grown. Just. It's actually grown. Uh, I'm still getting through my Tiger King phase. I haven't been able to get out of the house to get a hairdresser, but no, fair that'll enough. be changed. Hey, Next look, week, I'm, I'm on it. I know you're a big players man, Mickey, and you've been keeping an eye on the players through this period of isolation. How do you reckon they've been travelling? Uh, I've been struggling. Yeah, right, so, yeah. Some have been doing uh, better than others. Uh, Sean McCluggage, for example. Hughie, that, that's Hughie, Hughie McCluggage. Yeah, that's well, I've, been, I've been struggling yep. too. Yep. Um, <laughs> he... Uh, <laughs> he hasn't been coping well, if you believe this news report. Brisbane young gun Hugh McCluggage is spending lockdown at his family's dairy farm near Warrnambool. And with no footy to occupy his time, the 22-year-old is instead milking 700 cows a day. <laughs> I'm going to put it to you, that's a guy who's just struggling a bit with a sex ban. <laughs> I, they've cast. No, I just need no. to get this out of my system somehow. I, I, I I'm going to go and milk 500 cows. Seven, 700. 700. 700. I put it to you that the young Hugh McCluggage doesn't have Netflix. <laughs> um, I got champion data to crunch those numbers. 700 seems Is high. it possible? No, that's a, that's a cow. In a 10 hour day, that's a cow every minute. Uh, that can't be done. That's, I, don't, I dispute those numbers. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you've come out hard with some hard hitting oh, editorials well, tonight. Time, you know, I pledge um, yep. well, That's Hugh McCluggage. Yep. Uh, Angus Brayshaw from Melbourne uh, was also keeping busy. When the highlight of a 24 year old AFL star's day is tending to his onions, there's no denying we desperately need footy back soon. 
one day I'll chop them up and eat them myself and that'll be a good day. Yeah. Yeah. That know. will be a good day. You, want to, you know, just be careful, Angus. If Hugh McCluggage sees them, he'll try to milk them. <laughs> uh, you've never seen an onion milked. Oh, it's uh, no. something, uh, something I've never to behold. Seen. I didn't know you could a, do that. Hey, uh, Robbie Gray's girlfriend oh, is really? particularly proud of Robbie <laughs> and uh, his antics in the kitchen. Two weeks in self-isolation and Robbie Gray's been working on a new recipe for success. He did bolognese all by himself. He did spaghetti bolognese all alone. Um... <laughs> How did he manage Can that? you Honestly, win yeah. the Brownlow and MasterChef in the same year? <laughs> How did he do that it? That is... Spaghetti bolognese all by himself, <laughs> mate. <laughs> what? Yeah. Didn't know there was not much to it, is Once it? again, should have waited and used one of Angus Brayshaw's <laughs> onions. <laughs> That's right. I made a risol. <laughs> The, uh... <laughs> no, this is an onion. <laughs> uh, it's all in my book. Can I just yeah. say, um, Jamie McMillan yeah. uh, went down the DIY path. Oh, that's Did so he? many have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of time on his hands. But uh, a bit of painting. And he almost got caught uh, not being overly complimentary uh, about what it takes to be a painter. Have a listen. Don't worry. He saves it right at the end. Okay. I'm just pretty much here by myself, sitting down the side of the house, sanding and um, filling holes and working the paintbrush, so it's not too strenuous. It's um, a bit tedious, I'd, I'd say, and a bit brain-numbing, but um, full respect to all the painters out there. Oh, oh, shout yes. out to all the painters. Oh, to all the painters. Oh, no problem. Oh, hey, um, well, we took a spell, obviously. People uh, with a sharp eye will have noticed that. We haven't been here for the last couple of months. Yeah. You know, yeah, but, but <laughs> I think all... you're still on the spell, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> but not all, um, not all footy shows took a break. Some ploughed on through, and uh, credit to all of them for having a go. I mean, there wasn't an yeah. awful lot to talk about, but, um, but they, they, they had a crack when there was nothing yeah. to talk about, yeah. and I think that's kudos to them. Yeah, here, here. Yeah. I agree with that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Weeks of no footy, though, it was inevitable that... Um, uh, analytical football shows would eventually run out of sure. things to say, uh, r- run out of content. Is there a point for you? I have found the precise <laughs> moment when it was if there was officially no football to discuss. Ah, <laughs> right. uh, yes, look at that. That is a super moon, Caroline. In fact, it is the most super moon of the year. And if you stick your head out the window in the next 20 minutes, it'll be the best time to oh, see the Easter. super moon. Of course. It is. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> You know, Caro's <laughs> arrow that night was at Pluto for not being a planet. <laughs> By the way, that that moon, that particular moon. What? <laughs> what about what? that moon? What do you? you it's good, that's a good moon. That's, that's a good moon. That's a good moon. It's a yeah. full moon, it's and a blood it moon. it would have had a particularly powerful effect huh. that moon on tidal patterns around the world, as does Ed's head. <laughs> <laughs> That's a king tide, <laughs> what, what we're looking at there. Hey, um, it's an amazing moon, and I'm glad we got Eddie's take on it. We, um, <laughs> the hubs, the, the, the Perth teams, we saw them today I still loading don't understand up. the hubs. They're on there. Well, they're up to the Gold Coast. No, we're we're on holidays. A biospherical safe place for these players to play, and we know, you know, there's issues in Adelaide. There's a whole lot of stuff. They can't take the golf clubs. They're not allowed to surf as yet. They're getting tested regularly. Twice a week, the players are going to be uh, subjected to these COVID-19 tests, and, uh, and uh, there'll be a 30-day break if, in fact, uh, anybody breaches and tests positive. So there's all of that going on. Sure. You're there's burying the lead. Hey? You're burying the well, lead. Well, well, the intimacy rules are the ones that have seemed to have caught the most attention, haven't they, really? What, can you explain it to us? Well, explain, you know, explain the bonk ban, which well, is yeah, well, what we're... Well, you're only allowed to have um, intimate relations uh, with, your, with your partner. Oh, well... Yeah, with your partner. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, That's it. Just... You're not allowed to have any sort of people it's to sort of... A ban on having sex. Uh, I believe the NRL have also brought one in for group sex. <laughs> um, <laughs> just guys in the current climate, dial it down and not. By the way, I know a lot of Melbourne supporters who would like a total bonk ban because you don't want your father, son from that. <laughs> you don't want any not at all. Not from this group. Not from no, this no, group. No, no, from no, this no group. correct. No, no, no. Yes, but, indeed. So has this stuff been... I mean, we're, we're all acting as if... Nothing this... new. Yeah, Nothing yeah, yeah. new in this story. It's yeah. been around forever. Yeah. We've talked about, you know, before grand final, you, you don't have sex. Um, before a game. Before, before a game. Before a game. Before before a game. game. Sex, sex weakens yeah. legs. You know. um, yep. Brisbane Lions. Uh, back, was it Brisbane Lions back in the day? No, Sydney, Sydney Swans. Sydney Swans. 96, yeah. 96 yeah. it was. Yeah. And uh, they were told uh, in no uncertain terms to <laughs> zip it. <laughs> Players say the Irish joke is the Friday night sex ban. Despite the reaction, the orders come from high. Girlfriends and wives stay away from the Carlton Crest. And this is where the Sydney Swans will spend a lonely Friday night. While club doctors admit sex before a game doesn't affect performance, they say it's an unnecessary distraction. And Michael Voss says it could have helped him win a Brownlow. Have you ever had sex on a Friday night before a game? Uh, Well, uh, yes, I have to say I have. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> Nervous laugh at the end of that. Yeah. Yeah. Judging from yeah. that reaction, I'd say it was the first time. <laughs> Uh, man. That's a pretty full on story. No, what is, is a remarkable story. story. Yeah, yeah. It's I'll a nice motel they were staying at. That was a lovely motel. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely motel. Yeah, that at least two star. That <laughs> the bed spread was lovely. The bed spread. Yeah, no, no one's having sex in that bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me tell you. I'll tell you a game where I don't believe there was a bonk ban the oh. night before or after. Well, that's true. Well, yes. it was the yes. a game overseas. It was Toronto. In, in Toronto in Canada. Yeah. And have a listen to Straubs from Melbourne after the game. Just put it out there. <laughs> the crowd, you've been great. And all the single girls get back to the Royal York. We can all have a chat. And uh, the boys played fantastic. I'll take them all. So everyone get back there. Thanks very much. Well done, Straub. Well spoken. <laughs> Yeah, well, well said, Storms. Uh, well, it was a diff different time in the 80s, and wasn't what, it? Too, absolutely. You know? yeah. but we, and we all know, uh, as incurable romantics ourselves, yeah. that the subtle art of seduction, <laughs> it, it always begins with an announcement over the PA system. <laughs> we all know that. That's how it's... It's a story as uh, old as time. That's pre-Tinder. Yeah. That's that's pre-Tinder. Pre -tinder. No, no question about it. No question about it. i tell you, the uh, hardest working man in football in the last couple of months has been the AFL CEO, Mr Gillan McLaughlin. Time now to cross to his home, uh, where he's been good enough to join us a week away from the commencement of the season. Gil, great to have you on the show. Uh, are we ready, mate? Well, I hope so. Hey, guys, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, um, it feels... Uh, uh, thank God it's uh, the footy coming back uh, in a week's time. And um, I spoke to some coaches today. Our team, are, it will be ready. It'll be great. So we know the WA teams are heading off to Perth. They're, they've headed off tonight. Um, are the hubs set up? Is everything up there on the Gold Coast ready for, you know, the, the influx of footballers? Well, I don't know if the Gold Coast is ready for them, but uh, all the, <laughs> the hotels, I uh, saw uh, some vision from the Pines today. It's uh, Some of my guys were sitting by the pool. They were a good time. So they're in a great hotel, the Mercure and the Pines. The, the four clubs will be up there and uh, over the next 10 days. And... Um, Gold Coast is ready for them too. Fantastic, Gil. Um, thanks for joining us. Which of your houses are you coming to us from tonight? <laughs> can I ask? <laughs> <laughs> can we? Can't, can't be here. Oh, I heard you're a bit of a germaphobe. Is that true? Like, since the lockdown, you have actually specifically kept yourself pretty much housebound. Is there anything true uh, to that rumour? I've taken it very seriously, Mickey. Very seriously. Uh, mm. I know that's out there. I didn't used to be germaphobe, but I've... I really come to uh, relish my isolation. Well, I heard you were like Australia's Howard Hughes. You're <laughs> making a spruce goose in the basement Don't and it. bottling your own urine. Yeah. That's what I heard. <laughs> well, that's the only thing I haven't done. <laughs> hey, All Gil, right. There's still time. By the way, I, yeah, if you're going to you know, um, take this seriously, it's very, very generous of, uh, of the, uh, the boss. Yes, the, uh, yes. the head of honcho, the grand yep. poo bar, the, the, uh, the big cheese to give us some of his time. <laughs> Mr McLaughlin, thank you for joining us. Um, every team now plays each other once. Um, do you feel handcuffed about not being able to fix the draw? <laughs> <laughs> um, I certainly think that um, there are less uh, tools and uh, weapons in our arsenal... Um, Sam, but um, I'm sure we'll work through it. It's going to be good, isn't it? Don't, Nicky, you, oh, love, okay. the, you love this I, idea. I like the idea. I, th I think it could be the most pure premiership ever. Everyone plays each other once. Um, so it's, no. it's a totally fair, and then we go into a final series. And I'm going to maintain that until such time as Richmond can't make it. And then it's the worst decision <laughs> you've ever made, <laughs> McLaughlin. And I will hound you until the day comes out. Can I ask you about the, the sex ban, um, which obviously is getting yeah. uh, covered widely? Um, and uh, I, just, I, I want you to know that... As part of my isolation, I've taken that part very seriously. <laughs> well, that's what I want to know. Does it count if no one else is involved? <laughs> I can tell you, it was it was the opening my wife needed. <laughs> hey, Phil, uh, fans all over the place are wondering how long until we're getting sort of close to allowing people through gates. Are you, are you any in all the conversations having with you know health officials around the place? Are you getting a gut feel as to when you might be able to open the doors? It changed. You know, obviously, every day feels and looks better. Um, from where we were a month ago, it looks very different today. So I don't think it's for a, for a month or so yet, but I think if you, once we start poking in July, I'm optimistic, but it'll bend on 
The community have done an unbelievable job and we've been well led by our governments and are optimistic by July that the discussions might get a bit real. We've all struggled, uh, of course, with yeah. this break. Uh, Gil, how have you handled the disruption to the season? Uh, well, it's been busy. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been a tough period for a lot of people, but we were, um, uh, I'm just thrilled with getting, getting us back, Sam, and uh, hopefully a bit of a normality back in people's lives with the footy back. Oh, I was talking about the polo season, Gil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, you know as, I was, as I was stumbling over the answer, I thought, what am I being set up for here? Oh, it was a serious question. Gil, and, and, I can't believe it. I've spoken to you twice in two days, <laughs> and thankfully it won't be. We'll have a decent break now, another six months. <laughs> and, and Gil, just, just so we're all crystal clear, the China game's off, right? Is the, I just want to make sure. Did you ever consider it as a hub? As a, as a hub possibly. Hey, Gil, uh, you and your team in really challenging circumstances have done yeah. a remarkable job. Well done. Uh, this didn't look possible a couple of months ago. Uh, we can't wait for next Thursday night. Hopefully we get a, a smooth sailing week ahead of us and uh, this time next week we'll uh, be looking forward to the bounce of the ball, mate. Uh, thanks for joining us on the show and good luck with the final week. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Mick. Um, and no, no one else. <laughs> Kill the block of the AFL. So, you know, joining us on the show uh, a week away from the recommencement of the footy season. We've got a lot to look forward to. Uh, terrific to have him on the show. Uh, he's, he and his team have done a remarkable job with yeah. the help of a lot of other people around the place. So we're going to get a break out of the way. When we come back, a whole more Hall of Fame on the agenda when we return. Brings a tear to the eye, that. It really does. I'm a bit emotional. <laughs> I'm just, just a little bit emotional coming off the back of that. It's a great campaign uh, that uh, CB's been raising. <laughs> Money for pubs. They're, hey, real, they're listen, the lot. I've said to you before, don't act. Don't do anything, <laughs> all right? You can't. It's not your strength. But did you feel the raw emotion there? The pubs are such <laughs> a lot. <laughs> they're such a cornerstone of communities. They've all done it. Great to see them reopening. They're one of our great favourites, of course, the All Nations is back in business. Back where it all began. Don't no, at our start, that pub should be roped off like Graceland's. They should have tours through there. Buy a this is the stool Andy sat in. Buy a, va oh. buy a voucher at your local pub through love of your local.com.au. When your pub reopens, it'll match the donation you made. They're trying to raise uh, over... They're trying to raise $2 million dollars this. to help struggling publicans, which is a great thing, and we know how important they are and to our community. I'm doing my best to support publicans as well. It's, it's a, a one-man... Job. <laughs> well, I do love pubs. Keep going. Uh, stay involved with our, so, with our socials. Really Get involved. It. Uh, it's great to be back. And um, I've been seen walking around Richmond <clears> just <throat> peering through the windows of empty pubs. Hey, brilliantly <laughs> done by the... Again, we're patting the AFL on the back for a few things. We know that the Hall of Fame ceremony is one of the most keenly anticipated every year for obvious reasons. Well, it's the, the high watermark, isn't it? Well, it's really, the really it's the ultimate yeah. accolade yeah. for players, yeah. past players. I think you'll get in there eventually for your work done in the media. I think there's a spot for, That's a, a spot for you down the Big statue out the uh, but <laughs> it's, over the last four nights, I've been inducting people. There's been a new legend, obviously, inducted. Greg Phillips, Dean Cox, Jonathan Brown, Simon Black from last year, Lenny yeah. Hayes. John Kennedy Sr. becomes the 29th legend uh, in a remarkable career. Your great mate, Jonathan Brown, he's a good friend of everybody here, Wow. Uh, was, becomes the fifth line from that super three-peat side. When I think of Brown here, and I'm sure you'll have a bit more to say, this Mark, this, uh, you go back to the MCG this day against yeah. Hawthorne. We were there this day covering the game. That, that, that's ridiculous. Uh, that it is it beyond is. brave, I reckon. There's only a couple of us who can ever take a mark. <laughs> <laughs> like, like. Have a look at it from this yeah. angle. He never Ooh. takes his eye off the ball at any stage. It's crazy. It's madness. It's, it's an unbelievable moment. I, uh, I watched the, the night when, uh, when Brownie uh, was inducted, and it was a very special night. He had his daughter there, Olivia, 
And uh, if you want a, a special moment between a, a father and a daughter, uh, they were sitting there watching that very footage. And have a look at Olivia's reaction to him, her dad take that mark. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Which yeah. is the same thing your boys uh, did when they saw you drink a light beer, Mick. But <laughs> it, it's the same... It's the same... Uh, it's a beautiful moment. I tell you what, it's a cracking... It when he's a... still not talking to... <laughs> It is a great, uh, uh, it is a great batch of uh, inductees. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, to be honest, Mickey, yep. uh, the only question mark for me would have been brownie. Um, <laughs> but can the, I just say, when you think of brownie, you yeah. think of that goal. I think of the mark. I think that's mark. When I think, mark. When I think yeah. of brownie, I think of this moment. Right. Which, which is, no. No, it's <laughs> Look at that. That's all you need to know about the guy. What you work with him? You work yeah. with him every day. Yeah. What's he like? Paint the picture for us. And yeah. What do you know? Is it like working with Forrest Gump? Because <laughs> he seems a bit... Look, look, you know he'll be watching, watching tonight, don't you? If, what's his but, IQ? Don't It'd worry, be, at the end of it... At the end... Sorry. How can you lose your own it's crew? It's <laughs> one of the biggest weeks of the man's it's life. unbelievable. I, should, I wanted to say this too. I'm just saying it's great that he can play football. <laughs> because there's not... not a, not a myriad of options out there. <laughs> I'll back him up, by the way. It is a storied CV, and yeah, in, terms, in terms of the criteria, yep. he, he uh, you know, to be eligible, he retired five years ago, uh, stopped playing seven years ago, so that's a fair effort. Oh. Um, <laughs> but it is a wonderful CV is, and well-deserving of going into the Hall of Fame. I and you, and what is it like working with him? It's like working with you two. I do a lot of heavy lifting. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but, well, congratulations, John, mate. John, John, Kennedy, oh, Jonathan, John Kennedy Senior became the 29th legend inducted, of course. He is the man who is the kind of embodiment of the Hawthorne Football Club in so many ways. And whenever you think of John Kennedy Senior, there's some iconic moments. But we go back to that famous speech, don't we? That speech that has captured the imagination of so many of us from the 75 grand final. Do! Don't think! Think! Don't hope! At least you can come up and say, I did this, or I shivered it, or I played on. At least I did something. Poor tumble. Mate, chills every time. Half time yep, yep. of the 1975 grand final. The team's down by 20 points. It's all 20, 20 points are down by yeah. half time. It's always good to remember <laughs> that those players responded by going on to lose that grand final by 55 points. <laughs> So it's had a negative effect. I just, they're, they're, exactly. They're, they're, it's blowing out. No, that is amazing. That's amazing audio. We can break some news for you here just in case you haven't been looking anywhere else. Uh, there have been two new inductees into... No, this is fantastic. Yeah, now, John Abley, who was part of... There's so many legends out of the Port Adelaide Football Club. Seven-time Premiership player amongst a whole lot of other accolades. For him, he goes in tonight. And into the media hall of fame goes to a great friend of everybody here at the Seven Network. He did some great commentary work over at Nine as well, of course. The best. The great Dennis Cometti goes into the hall of fame phone tonight, which is magnificent. Well done, yeah. 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 So much that, that, he has, um, that he has given to the game of footy. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just say what everyone's thinking. It's a pretty lean year. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, congratulations sincerely. Uh, so many highlights to choose from when so you think, of, De when so you think of Dennis Committee. So when you think of Dennis Committee and all the highlights that you could play, he was yeah. unbelievably you, talented. You picked yeah. one? I have picked one. I'll no, get there. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> He, uh, he was great on his own, uh, but he was, he was even better uh, with uh, fellow commentators, as he was here with the great Bob Skilton. What about this hot weather, Bobby? 31 degrees. Who will that favour? Well, the last time it was 31 degrees, it was won by Hawthorne in 1961, their first flag. Oh, trivia. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like perfect. two tennis players just perfect. going back and forth. It was so effortless. Hey, we've all been uh, sort of coping with isolation in various forms. A lot of us have been watching a whole lot of stuff on telly. Yeah. What have you been uh, diving I've into? I've watched the worst space launch in the history of space travel. It was embarrassment to anyone <laughs> who's ever fronted Why? up with the right stuff. This <laughs> is embarrassing. Have a look at these. They've turned up in their homemade costumes. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are we doing? Sending daft punk into space? Here they go and jump into their mum's car. As they, they go off... That's, by the way, that's Bob and Doug. It's like two uncles going down the road to pick up some food for dinner. <laughs> and then off they, off they trundle. Even the monkeys they send up into space are going, nah, you can't be doing that. That is terrible. Bob and Doug. Bob, 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 and Doug. Bob Uncle no, Bob and no. Doug. Fair to, say, no, fair to say no bonk band required for those <laughs> two. <laughs> what have you been, um, you been watching? Terrible. Well, you can have your space... Um, 
launches, launches and, yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, but for me, and you can have your Netflix and you can have your stand, all that stuff. Mate, why would you go there when it's all right here on Seven Mate? <laughs> That's right. What, yeah. what, have, what have you been watching? Dipper's Destination. <laughs> what? Uh, Dipper's, what is this? What is it? Well, let's, let's the great Robert Dippier Domenico explain more. Hi, guys. Dipper here. And welcome to the first episode of Dipper's Destination. And our first legend caravan destination is Thailand. Let's go. That's right. Dipper's Destination brought to you by Legend Caravan. Uh, of course, when you think Thailand, you think caravans. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> why, why, um, That'd be really why, handy when you're island hopping around <laughs> Thailand. <laughs> you know, the Thailand, Thailand's so small, you don't need a caravan. You could run around it, by the way. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, car caravans. Thailand, of course, the, cap the caravan capital of the world. Uh, Dipper, Dipper's there. Dipper's there, and he's, uh, it's a new travel show. With the great, I've, I've got a feeling this may not be the last time we uh, play a clip from Dipper's Destination, <laughs> but um, there's just so much there. Uh, of course, um, does he get to Phuket at all? Is he? Yeah, does yes, he, he does get to, to, uh, he does get to Phuket. Mean? He gets yeah. down that famous street, Bangla Road. Yeah, right. Okay. I'll tell you, it's amazing. It doesn't matter where Dipper is, yeah. he, he's going to run into someone. Yep. Yeah. Hey, hey, guys, where you guys from? Hey, hey that's me, love a group from Melbourne. It doesn't matter where I go in the world, the people just love the dipper. Thanks, <laughs> guys! And if you're going to do a travel show to Thailand, yep. uh, just to sell how beautiful the, <laughs> the environment is, you should always stand in front of a roller door under, <laughs> under an awning. Some scaffolding. Uh, yeah. Oh, here I am in <laughs> Thailand. You know, you can't get, you can't take a bad photo over there. Although Dipper found one there. That's what took care of it. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's Dipper's uh, destinations. Yeah. I highly Where's he going next? Do you know where he's going I, next? I've got, his, I've got the schedule, by the way. So yeah. Thailand's a pretty, you know, this was obviously uh, before things. They've opened with a big gun. Absolutely, because uh, episode one was. Thailand, episode two, South Australia, <laughs> and they finish, I think, in at a bus stop in Benalla. So, <laughs> oh, it'd be great for Cameron. I'm going to be catching up with that. Where was that seven, mate? Yeah. Dipper, that'll be highly entertaining. Yeah, no, no question. Uh, can that. I just yep. finish with, uh, by the way, you know, yep. that seems like an odd, an odd fit, but it's not. Because when you think of former AFL champions and caravans, yeah. uh, if Dipper's exhibit A, the great Malcolm Blight is exhibit B. <laughs> Right across our island continent, the trusted name in caravans is Knowles Island Star. Knowles Caravans, Knowles Caravans, Knowles Caravans, Knowles Caravans. Say, Mickey, why didn't, why didn't Knowles Caravans sponsor Dipper's Destination? <laughs> but hang on, now we're, uh, we're now advertising car caravans <laughs> in the Caribbean. We've got a caravan, we've got a caravan. No, I do know a caravan no, destination. We, we, there's a lot to unpack. We, 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 and we need an ad break to do so. Uh, we'll, we'll go and unpack all of that in the break. When we come back, a man who played out. Standing football for two clubs, one of only 46 men to play 100 games for two different teams. He's going to join us next, Dale Thomas here on the front bar. Right. show every time, every now and again a player comes along and from the day he steps out at the level captures the imagination. This bloke uh, played 100 games for both Carlton and Collingwood. The only man in the history of football to do so. What a talent he was. It's all over at the elite level for him, but he's been good enough to join us. <laughs> Break, yes. Break it to him gently. Oh, I think he's worked that, out. I think he's worked that by now. <laughs> Dale Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. That was great. It sounded a bit brutal, didn't it? Oh, you know? There was a chance of a comeback. They were going to extend this for a while there, bring back the mature players. Did you, did, were you? Yeah, you, did you go come close? Uh, no, I, I pretended like I was training, but I haven't done a single and, uh, thing. <laughs> I'm looking at you now, and I think that ship sailed. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> 258 games for Carlton and Collingwood. We're going to have a look at some of the highlights of you. When you be on, don't be modest here. Was there anything you, did, you didn't think you could have a crack at doing on the footy field? Oh, uh, I guess football was the one thing that I knew that I was good at. I wasn't overly blessed at school. Um, and I didn't really want to do a trade or anything, so I put all my eggs into one basket and thankfully... It's a good goal. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't really teach that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, if you can do it on your right, you might as well do it on your left. Do it on so. your left. Oh, look at that! Bang! 
it's yeah. crazy, mate. It's the, the, the range of things. Look at this. Go. This is my favourite. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> that has launched. As a kid, though, all I did, I ran around with a football from the age of eight. So, to, you know, this is the end results of all of that hard work and... Uh, annoying my mother, I guess, breaking windows, kicking footballs at doors, and yeah, yeah. Taking always them. that you could always take the hang. Like, yeah, well, I was little growing up. Yeah. I grew really late, so you know, to play against a taller Who bloke, is? yeah, there's another one. I don't remember you taking so many. <laughs> <laughs> I made the, I made the bloke who's Look at this the good scalp here. Cop that Rioli. Yeah. Yeah, you have... snooze, you lose. <laughs> that is. I guess you ever thought about getting into commentary, Mick? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say the best to last days. Yeah, there's yeah. one. So, yeah. Look, there's some good stuff there, some great memories, obviously, and as you so eloquently broke it to me, it's never happening again. So <laughs> it's been, did, it's been did great feel, all season. Like. <laughs> did you feel at home straight away? Because, you know, some, some players arrive yeah, and yeah. you go, it's going to yep. take them a while to mature and get in there, but you just hit the seat, you just hit the ground running, and first straight game. away people are going, yeah, who the hell this is, is this kid? This is your first, first game. game. I guess I didn't know anything else, as I sort of touched on. It was the one thing that I knew I was pretty handy at, so confidence and belief were... You know, sky high, and went, I think that was my second ever kick, and went back and dobbed one from 45. Did you ever... <laughs> a couple of seconds later. Uh-oh. Good <laughs> some, of the, uh, some, of the, some of the grizzled old vets don't like seeing shaggy head kids come in and do this sort of stuff. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No, well, I'll tell you who doesn't was uh, Shane Wakeland, who I took the hanger in front of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, have a look at this. This is McLeod. You take, you take, take him on. The first game, cop that. Wait a check, please. Did an, old you... timer, did an old bloke ever try and sort you out early in your career? Uh, I played on um, Glen Archer in my second or third game, yep. and he said pretty quickly into the game, you go near the ball, you'll cop another one of those, <laughs> which was an elbow to the back, which I thought was a bluff. The next time I went to the, near the ball, I copped one, and <laughs> by about the 29-minute you know, mark of the fourth quarter, I wish I'd never played. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. Now, before you got to the elite level, you played your junior footy out at Druin. It's a yeah. true, is this a true story? Because I know Gary Ablett Sr. was a... a, a idol of yours, that he turned up at training one day while you were out playing yeah. in that league and did, did drills with you? Is Correct. This true? Yeah, so his uh, brother Len coached me in the under-16s or under-18s yeah. right through and um, as a treat for the boys one night he had his brother Gary come up and I was oh, a fantastic. shaggy wow. head kid running around with the number five on me back and the big fella still had it, he would retire and he you know, did the old, ah, oh, this is what you do and if you get it here, have a shot and he's well round in, he's, I think he's probably wearing Dunlop volleys or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bang yeah. one home from 55 on the left. So he gave, <laughs> you, he gave you a bit, like he was... He gave us heaps, yeah, he was yeah. unbelievable, yeah. That's and, great. Daisy, you were quickly, uh, the Collingwood faithful, they uh, embraced you immediately. Uh, you quickly became a cult hero. How was that, how was that um, uh, you know, did your teammates... Look at this, I mean, that you can't how, bang this yeah. stuff on. How that's... did that go down with your teammates? Um, yeah, well, that was the big shave I did. Uh, look, it was, a, it was really weird, because I guess growing up, all you want to do is be known as, you know, you dream of people, I guess, knowing you, and that was the whole thing about a bit of the appeal of playing AFL, and then once it happens, it's really bizarre, as you'd know, with mm. people stopping you everywhere being the national brand. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, uh... I heard Bucks dirty up. Is that, is that true? Well, did, 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 yeah. did, did Bucks dirty up because all of a yeah, sudden... Did he not like it? Well, I outsold his jumper in the first year, the first play to do year. so. Yeah, well, in the first week or two, oh, well, so... That would have really... <laughs> seen, that would really have really seen seen exclusive as to why, <laughs> ten years on, I might have got pushed out the door. You ah! can't get Back a little bit. What, what, what was that like? To be, you had Bucks as your teammate and then you had him as your coach. Was that, was that difficult? It was a little bit difficult. Um, he was my mentor in my first couple of years, so he sort of taught me the ropes of and showed me all parts of the AFL life, I yeah. guess you could say. It was a little bit old school back then. Um, and then I was sort of... I probably didn't really move with the times as fast as he did, really. Wow, you say that, but you went past him. Well, yeah. we, <laughs> we, we saw and we heard so much about the relationship between you and Mick Mouldhouse. What did... Did that happen quickly? Did you find a level between one another pretty quickly? I think, as, you know, I've spoken about a fair bit. Mine and Mick's relationship, I guess, he sort of not only took me on as a, a father figure a little bit off the field, but he gave me some jobs to do playing football that I didn't really want to do, like that defensive half-forward role yeah, yeah, before yeah. it came in vogue. And I guess at the time I didn't know he was trying to teach me how to put a defensive side to my game, which in four or five years' time is playing on the wing. You've got to learn to run both ways. So yeah. he was sort of teaching me lessons along the way, and I guess I did it. And, um, yeah, the respect built. And, you know, it's pretty well known that he loves me. And yeah. if you probably <laughs> won the grand final, he'd love you too. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 
just say, that, that kick to kick with Mick before a game, yeah, that is perfect preparation, by the yeah, way. If, if, if the uh, opposition team has a 65-year-old man playing for <laughs> them. Um, the enjoyment I got out of kicking torps at a 65-year-old man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How are his hands? And I believe he used to run out onto the ground after the game and do kick to kick as well. Is that true? <laughs> No, no, no. no. Hey, Daisy, we have a uh, segment here on the show. It's one of our very favourites called Fresh from the Archives. And, Daisy, this one involves your mentor, Mick Malthouse, and it involves his famous sense of humour. Now, you <laughs> may remember the 1982 grand final against Carlton yeah, when this occurred. Five. So, yeah. Helen D'Amico ran out. There's a naked woman on the ground. You'd think most young men would be interested. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even Mick, oh no, it's not on. That's, heads will roll. Bruce he, Tempany broke his arm that day, had it smashed in half, and even he's had, having a laugh. Mick Mulder. <laughs> what, um, can, you know, when uh, Mick left Collingwood, did you think that he'd coach again? No, I didn't. I think um, it was, he made it pretty clear that he wouldn't. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it's funny you say that, Dale, because um, <laughs> oh, he did make it pretty clear. This was at the 2011 Collingwood uh, Best and Fairest, uh, and it'd be fair to say that his coaching was it was very clear about his future. Yes, I couldn't possibly coach against the boys that I've been with, some for 12 years. I don't know what I have to say, but I'm not coaching anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> And no, there it is. Well, in his defence, like, he probably got me over there so he didn't have to completely coach against all of them. Well, that's true. He had to bring someone up. might have been another asterisk. Hey, let's go back to 2010 when you're still wearing the black and white stripes and the grand final. The last time we'll ever see a drawn grand final in history at footy. What, what were you thinking when the siren... Can you remember what you were thinking when the siren sounded? Oh, not exactly, but it just exhaustion. It was such a great game. Um, every play was by the, by the ball, so... Yeah, I was genuinely knackered and yeah. probably a bit unsure like everyone else, I guess. I, wonder, you, I can't remember. How did you go in both those games? Oh, oh. I was struggling in all my grand finals. I think I only averaged about 29 and a half in a game. <laughs> <laughs> you did go all right. You did go all right. You skip, we saw you skip. You were in the Norm, Norm Smith yeah, conversation, the, the, only, the only player to be in the uh, votes both times. So Lenny Hayes has got one of my uh, Norm Smith and Pendles has got the That's other. That's right. So yeah. If they want to bring him over and let me wear them, that'd be great. St- you're actually a bit <laughs> stiff. We saw Nick Maxwell uh, looking uh, fairly uh, spent at the end of that uh, game. Your skipper did have this to say at the end of that uh, drawn grand final. It's probably going to take this for the AFL to change the rules. It's an absolute joke. There's no way it should be decided after another game. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, yeah, Nick's probably um, speaking a slash a touch brash there. Um, I think they put five goals on us in the last quarter, so if it went another five minutes, he wouldn't be a premiership captain. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if he probably had his time again, he would have ripped the handbrake on and yeah, yeah. explored all options. Yeah. That, that grand final was famous also, or infamous, bit for the flooded rooms. <laughs> can, can, what, can you take us... Uh, what happened? Well, the whole day was... So there's a draw. The, No-one knew what was happening. Maxie's running his mouth. Um, <laughs> and then we, got, we went to go down the sheds and they told us that the sewerage had the s- leaked yeah. and there was literal crap everywhere. Yeah. So we had to go to the old Richmond rooms on the other side of the ground. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? That's a sacred site. So it happened, that had happened before you got there? On the, you, you arrived? You lobbed at the MCG? And no, so that had happened throughout the, the day. Game. So there's oh. 100 odd thousand and obviously everyone's oh, got a bit yeah. on the edge of their seats. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, mate. 2010, you gave your fans a real thrill. And uh, Collingwood fans, as we know, can celebrate like no others. I'm going to show you a clip which involves Collingwood fans. Uh, a warning, there is graphic content here. And children, you may want to leave the room. Uh, as this piece approaches its end. Here we go. Seems We're off to a fly. Seems pretty gentle. Collingwood fans, not a mensa meeting. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's there it is. Uh, he, he's now on the board, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there's a lot Jesus. to talk to you about. Can you stick it? Oh, no, you're going to stick it around. You've got to stick it around, mate. Darren Thomas is going to stick around more with him on the other side of this. the show. Fantastic to be back. Brewery Fresh at Carlton Draft. Our uh, special guest is Dale Thomas, who's over yonder. Lovely to have you here with us. And Daisy, there are some players who you go at the end of their career, you, you worry 
how they're going to slip back into civilian life and normal society. I never had any fears for you. <laughs> I, I always felt you would, would look forward to it and adapt brilliantly. How are you finding your life now post-football and what are you doing and how are you keeping yourself busy? Uh, well, yeah, you should have probably had a few fears. So I did do a silly jungle show for a month, which mm. was interesting. Uh, I came out of that, though, had a big, exciting year planned. Um, yep. A bit of work with Triple M doing their special comments. Welcome aboard. A, thank you. Um, a trip to Italy, which would have been about now, so I wouldn't have been here. I would have Hang been... on a second. You were going to go to... I was just going to pop into the GP at uh, Monaco. Yeah. Um, just sit on a, a bit of a yacht there and watch the race for a couple of days. You, could, you could do that or... Come here. Yeah. Hey, who's the winner now? Yeah, he's looking so, good. Yeah. Is that true? Was that a goal of yours to just it hit the Monte bit, Carlo? And... Bit of a bucket list trip, that. So I was meant to be there as we speak. So. Have you ever thought about going on one of Dipper's caravan trips? <laughs> I saw because the I honestly feel that they might have a hold the key to your future. Um, hey, um, you played with some blokes who were fairly heavily tattooed uh, throughout your career, but you've been fairly... Um, clean skin throughout. Have you have you wavered at any stage, and have you got a tattoo? <laughs> I've I've got a few sillier ones. Have you? Yeah. What's it's... your silliest? Oh, I've One got of a caravan. That... <laughs> <laughs> I've got um. No, I've got. I love footy trip on one of my uh, butt cheeks that Ed Kerno did for me in Thailand. Um, and I've got uh -oh. the Mighty Mare Black Caviar. Black also. Caviar. Yeah. Why, why have you got Black Caviar? There it is. On is, that, is that actually it? That's, that, that's, that's it. That was fresh. Um, so we went to the races. Uh, the Taylor family, who were part owners in Black Caviar, were also big Collingwood fans. So they, he sure introduced me. They'd get the room every race meet they went to because yeah. she was a superstar. So we went in there and drank their free... Yeah, as you fresh Carlton yep. draft. Yep. Carlton. Well, done. well, well done. done. Thank nice you. Work. Yep. Um, <laughs> and we did that. It got to uh, 17 or 18 wins, and I said, if she goes overseas, like, don't do it, don't do it. And I was like, oh, if she gets 20 wins in Australia, I'll get the tattoo of her. And then, oh, she did. sure enough, they went oh. to Morfordville back to back Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> got 20 centre overseas, and I just got a text saying, pay your bets. So, oh, well done. Good on you. You know, the same thing happened to Andy. Andy said That's the same true. thing at the racetrack it's about true. a horse, and when yeah. it happened, he had to get the tattoo. Archer, 1961. <laughs> 18. 18. Yeah. 18. 1861. <laughs> you, you, you're on the course that day, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I didn't think you'd go back to back. Cost me a thripney bit, that one. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> oh, I never thought he'd Just go to back clarify, to back. by the way, that you, 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 uh, you bet against Black Caviar. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, good. good signing, Triple M. Well done. Um, <laughs> hey. Have you ever won Mark of the Year? Did you ever win Mark of the Year? No, I've been robbed of a few things. Did you ever win Goal of the Year? Uh, no. Didn't get a Norm Smith either. Mm. I'm not dirty. I'm no, not dirty. No, you not that game. I would I'll put it to you, though, that this goal in uh, 2007, round 14, 2007. Oh, Daisy, this, don't do this. This could have been any. This Look at the, look at the gather in the wet, around one, around two, from the boundary. That is a goal of the year. Yeah. Except what? Well, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, a boundary umpire called it back. <laughs> so. You're out of bounds. Okay. Here's yeah. the pro here's the problem. You're a mile out of bounds, <laughs> mate. mate. Seriously, my you feet run... are just out. My, I'm on a 45 degree angle. The whole ball's got to be out. Man. If yeah. they wonder why I got fined seven and a half grand last year for swearing an umpire, <laughs> there might have been a bit of that. Coming out. You're that deep. You could have bought a hot dog <laughs> from, from, from the stands up there. So you've looked you at are... that. Do you reckon you're still in? I mean, do you maintain you're in, or do you reckon he's got it right? No. Nah, well, look, the umpire's calls final. I oh, know, so but did you feel no, like I you... was in by a bloody mile? <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. Cost me a car. What was it? It cost what? me a car. What was it? Was it a car it was that a, year? Yeah, it was a car. I think a, a beautiful Nissan n track or something it might have been. There you go. Um, How many plugs am I getting? No, you're, <laughs> I'm fine. I don't even know whether they're wheels, to be honest, but you're killing it. You're going beautifully. Um, the move to Carlton. <laughs> How did that... Was that a long time in the in the offing? Was it... Was you working on, on this and having a chat about this for a while? No, not really. I got down to... I went down to Sandringham and played a game in the uh, twos just before... I was trying to come back and play finals. I think we were going to play against... I ended up being Port Adelaide. And I had to get through that game uh, to then be able to be um, available for selection, I guess, in that final. Yep. I rolled my ankle um, and didn't do any damage to the surgery that I'd just come back from. Yep. But it was at that point I was told that sort of negotiations were off. Right. Um, were, you were you surprised by that? Well, at the time, I guess I was a little bit stung by it, but not surprised. Looking back, you're not going to sign a bloke who's just had an ankle surgery, rolled his ankle, and you're not sure. Um, so I probably got my back up a little bit, and at that point I went, well, you know what, I might explore my options. 
So it was late it, to be completely honest to answer your question. It was really late in the year that I started thinking about going elsewhere. We yeah. talked about this, Mickey. The idea that it was Carlton, though, Dale, you go from your premiership player at Collingwood. The idea that it was Carlton. Do you think it's? That, the that, I think that's the it? biggest move you can make in football, which is two, two tribes who famously hate each other. There aren't many players who've made that crossover. Did you feel and were you aware of the pressure oh. when you? in that first time playing against Collingwood. I'll tell you what, if there had been a hole there that could say he sink me and uh, take me out, that was <laughs> yeah. an absolute hosel rocket. As I said, though, I, I knew I could kick the footy, so I went back there. I was so confident. I was oh, probably mate. too confident. I leaned back on it and hit it off my ankle. So, What about this one? Uh, what did it... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. No, that's all right. I kicked him in the face. Yeah, well, were you disappointed? <laughs> was it shocking for you when Collingwood fans started booing oh, you? Not. You're a premiership oh, yeah. player at Collingwood and all of a sudden you're on the receiving end of, 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 of that treatment. Was no. it a shocking moment or were you prepared for it? I, I was somewhat uh, prepared for it, but, you know, it wasn't as if I sat there and selected through a list of teams to go to and I chose Carlton. There was no other suitors, so... <laughs> you went to Carlton, but can I say this? Is it true or false? You still kept parking at the Westpac <laughs> Centre <laughs> in the car park in Collingwood <laughs> after, after you left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely true. I went to a Melbourne, <laughs> I went to a Melbourne Storm game one night and parked in um, the coach's car park, and you wouldn't leaving. Walked out with my mate, and Bucks walked out. He'd been at the same game <laughs> as I was getting into my car. Hey, yeah. Exciting stuff. That's, Good times. When, when you, I remember when you, you if. Your last year at Carlton was your best year at Carlton, I reckon. I mean, you, I don't know whether you agree with that or not. You, I thought you had a fantastic... You looked fit and strong. And Can I say this sincerely? It wouldn't have been hard. <laughs> <laughs> when, you la- when you came off your last... La- <laughs> when you came off your last game, you're clearly saying goodbye. I mean, this was a... You know, this looks like a bloke who's saying goodbye. In your heart of hearts, Daisy, did you... Did you think this was the last time you'd play at the level? Yeah, I did. You did? Um, yeah. I was pretty content with the fact that that was sort of it. I was fortunate that I got told, I guess, two weeks out, so I started a retirement tour and got chaired off from trainings yeah. and got chaired off. <laughs> we played St Kilda the week before and I think there was sort of 85,000 people. We won. Yeah. So I got a, a really good send-off, so I was really grateful for that. And, I, you know, I guess I knew in my heart of hearts that it was probably done. Yeah. Um, I probably thought I may have been able to go again if they wanted me to, but yeah. in this current climate, doing two pre-seasons, and, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think they probably made the right move in sacking me before I retired. Yeah, right. Pretty sure at the start of your career, though, you would have taken 258 games in a premiership, mate. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good yeah, career. It's a great you record. Uh, yeah, I'm not, you're sort of ebbing and flowing here. There's a bit of praise <laughs> and I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you think your boom's about to come down. Yeah, that's... It's not. We, we, <laughs> we're very grateful you came on the show. We, we've had you in our sights the minute you retired. We thought you'd be a great guest on the show. We've given, given us so much joy. We love you. You're a character of the game. When we... It was learnt that you were coming on the show. We got a call from a bloke who owns a hotel. Yeah, the George on Collins. Yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah. you know the George on Collins. <laughs> yeah, I so certainly now do. This is, we're not mucking around no, here. No, this is fair. This is an absolute <laughs> true story. I hope this you is went, going where I think it is. You, you went there after your last game, and you went there and you had a drink, and you left your kit bag there. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, so I got a... We played in Geelong the last game. Mm. Um, gave that bloke my jumper on the way off, had a limo waiting out the front, walked into the George with my Carlton kit on, and... Yeah, and, you, and it's been there ever since. He gave us this a call. This is your bag. And we've got this it. Is, yes. And we're returning it to you. And uh, I hope you don't mind, but we've, we've had a bit of a poke around inside it. No, so we just need to and point out this, this is, is true. This, this is, is your actual yeah. game. Oh, mate, I've, I've, Why didn't you think of that? There's your boots. I was meant to go and pick it up a few times. I just haven't got around to it. And Greg, who runs the yeah. show down there, is an absolute legend. He's like, I'll just hang on to it for you. It's so. a bit woofy. It's fine. It's what else is in there? By the way, you're obviously very... You're fully committed to the Carlton Football Club. That's, <laughs> that's your Collingwood bag, by the way. That's your Collingwood it. bag. Traditionalist. I'll give, you, I'll give you 500 bucks for these. <laughs> I, I don't know what they are. And, and, and look at this. And then I'm not making up. We haven't played with this. No. Can you explain why you travel with this? <laughs> yeah, well, so I sort of... I believe in astrology and that, so I saw in the future there might have been a... a <laughs> 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 No, no idea, to be right. honest. Right, good on you. It gives me great pleasure oh, to give it back you. to you. And you've got to mention that it's still a calling. I've already done that. No, no, yeah. we have, yeah, we've done it. <laughs> hey, mate, congratulations on the career. Uh, you've been a magnificent... You're a magnificent player and you're a character and it's been a joy to have you on the show. So thank well, thanks right. for coming on. Thank thank you. Dale Thomas, thank our you. special yeah. guest. We'll give him the bag. Ben, let me shake it the hands. What a player he was. When we come back, mix some multi. <laughs> Thank you.
and I declare the 2020 AFL Women's Best and Fairest Madison Press Barkers from the Carlton Football Club. <laughs> Bits happen while we've been away. There's still been uh, a lot of this and a lot of that happening. This young lady, Great stuff. honestly, well done. you go and watch her play footy. Maddie Press Barkers from the Carlton Footy Club. Two-time Best and Fairest winner at the Blues and this year was crowned the AFLW uh, Competition Best and Fairest against a lot of fantastic players. She is a... They should give her that award again next year when we're not in lockdown. So she could in, yeah, uh, that's uh, accept idea. it in yeah, public. Yeah, she's that would a, have been a surreal experience. Terrific, well terrific little well player. Um, so that's the great news. The, the sad news was the loss of Bob Hammond. Time continues to roll on, obviously, even without footy. And one of the giants of South Australian football Absolutely. passed away. He was an absolute legend of the SA NFL, uh, an inaugural chairman of the Adelaide Crows, AFL commissioner, uh, and has left an unbelievably deep footprint in the game. So um, our yep. condolences to Cheers. the Hammond family. Absolutely. To everybody uh, there. Time now for Mix Multi. I, lo- I, love how the, I love how the crew didn't clap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, not a, it's not popular, right? Hey guys, guys. <laughs> it's back. Don't feel you have to laugh. Just na- react naturally <laughs> as you see fit. And we'll just see how it goes. Okay. Right okay. Do you need any help you from me? Look and learn. Take some notes. Okay. Right. What do you this got? is how up, <laughs> top shelf champagne comedy is right. delivered to the punters out there. As right. we go to Mix Multi. Here we go. Oh, we've already done we've that. Done. <laughs> <laughs> we've done it. It's just ready for the first leg, Mickey. Uh, okay. Oh, it's me. Oh, yeah, it's first. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. First up, have a look at the hairstyles of Sydney Stack and Max Gorn and others who've returned to work after isolation. And look at these bozos. Here, look at the, here we go. Here we got, we got some coloured hair there. Bit of spare time in the hands. There's Maxie Gorn. This is too much. I would like to wager anyone who comes back to work with dye in their hair is a dead set dickhead. <laughs> yeah, no argument from us. Um, you can't have it. How about you take number five, Gentleman Max, to place in race eight at Wagga and give you 440 the place. What do you reckon? It was a good, it was a good first leg, wasn't it? It was yeah, like, no, no, no. like we never left. How, how I'll is, take that. How has this segment survived coronavirus? <laughs> oh, right, well, it, it mightn't survive the next leg. Uh, second leg, what you're looking for here is what's going on. Uh, have a look. Here's, here's a, a bloke. He's a delivery a driver and he's about to deliver something. So he comes to the door and as a delivery driver, I'd say it's a fair chance that's his van in the background. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is disappearing out of screen. Now, he's, he's rung the bell, he's out of shop. I'd say he's about to realise it's his van now. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. I'd like to wager yep, right that the parcels in the back of that van are about to be delivered priority post through someone's lounge wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe bug it on a bit. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Nothing. You can't have that. Do you know what it is? It's going over their heads. But how you. <laughs> they how? don't know how. It's how a bit about... cerebral for you people, is it? How about you take number six? He runs away. <laughs> To Can place I... in race four at Ram, we're going to give you 280 the place. What do you reckon? It's good to be back. That's all I'm saying. All this right. is, I'll no, take that. Good. I'll take anything. I'll just good to be th- back. Do you have concerns halfway through that the multi is too intellectual this week? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you don't have to be a member of Mensa, but th- this lot are clearly <laughs> <laughs> challenged in some department. <laughs> Here we go, third. What do you got? I can't even find where it is. Here, here we go. <laughs> third leg. We, we saw this up. We'll cut Come it out later. We, we saw this earlier. Scott Morrison on the lawn uh, delivering uh, a new policy speech. Uh, guy's not happy. Hey, guys, I've just reseated that. Yeah. Can everyone get off the grass, please? Sure. Let's just move back from there. Come on. <laughs> I'd like to wager... The poo jogger might want to give that lawn a wide berth. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> don't even try. Poo jogger. Uh, yeah, you can't have it. But how about you take the storm to beat the rabbit <laughs> and it'll give you a dollar for it. Reckon Andy, that's cooch, cooch or Bermuda. No, it's Walter. I, I told you before, it's Walter Buffalo. Walter Buffalo written all over it. You're not helping. <laughs> You're not helping. All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's boot this baby home. Yeah, please. The fourth and final leg on behalf of Sportsbet. Good to have you back, by the way. Here we go. Uh, 
Mate, we're on air. I know that, I know that. Yeah, I don't, don't seem to have it. Oh, yeah. Uh, have, a look, have a look at this. You're dancing at home and things can go wrong. So the girl's having a dance and it's good to see. Nothing bad happening here. And then, oh! I'd like to wager that was a reverse torp. <laughs> it could very well have been. You can't have that, though. Instead, how about you take uh, this, the Meadows Race 5, number two, Tig Along Tonk. And you can, that'll win, if that wins, you get $2.50 on Bag it up. Right, what, what you go. Get? Look, What's the value? Right? Give me the value. Good value, I reckon. Have a look. Here we go. There we go. 41, 41 bucks. bucks. Lock you, it in. If you want to get lose it. all the money you've saved in isolation. <laughs> and I know there's tough times Shall out there. Keep up? Take your money out of yep. super. Yep. <laughs> take, take, you, you can get up to 10 grand yep. out of your super <laughs> and plonk it on mixed multi. Don't do that. You will be right. having a... Boat drinks in no, the Bahamas. You won't, no, you won't. Uh, mix mode. If you want to have a go, sports bet app. Look for Mix Multi. Mega bet section of the app, app, app and make sure you gamble responsibly when we come back. The last shout. Check down to her to join us to tell us about the big freeze, number six of the Jeep. the last shout. No prizes for guessing what it is about. Uh, it is a very special day on the footy calendar, one that we're completely committed to. Of course, Big Freeze, number six. Uh, we're fighting MND. We're getting closer every year with the help of everybody who buys one of these. We'll tell you where to get those in a moment. The Danaher family have been enormous, leading the massive army who are raising funds to fight this thing. Beck Danaher joins us. She always does. Oh, uh, lovely to see you again. Um, how's your old? How's the old man? First yeah, I left him behind. I thought yep. it was an opportunity for me to take on the <laughs> label. No, nah, he's going really well. Um, he's sitting at home watching it all unfold. Um, M and D is a bit of a beast, so it's making things a little bit harder for him. But you know, he's such a positive. What you've done is incredible. I think, I think the, yep. the big freeze itself has raised over twenty-three million dollars. I think it's closer to forty million for the entire. Uh, armory of, of the car rallies and everything else. It's he's, he's just a pioneer and he's just been incredible. The family's awesome. And we're going again. Even in coronavirus time... How's it work? It's a bit different this year, right? What's what's happening this year? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I think, Mick, you're, uh, you're probably a lot more well-versed at <laughs> what is actually happening, uh, getting the big gig this year. Me and uh, Daisy Pearce, two top-flight athletes, <laughs> uh, hosting the Big Freeze 6. It's on Monday, June 8. There's the times. And, of course, obviously, we can't slide at the G this year. So all the clubs, and God love the clubs, who uh, only had to be asked once, and they all sent something in. They've all done their own slides, and they've sent them in. So we've got some of the best slides in sliding history. We've got all the clubs participating. All around Australia. We'll speak to some yep. doctors yep. who are frontline troops in uh, the fight against MND. It's going to be great fun. We've got some good clips, and it'll be... It's just a good reminder yeah. and a timely reminder yeah. of how, how tough and, as you said, the beast, how 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 full-on uh, this this is. I, I don't know what it's like in other parts of Australia, but you cannot walk around Melbourne at this time of year it's in incredible. the suburbs in the city without seeing various variations of the beanies. Where did the, where'd the actual idea for the beanie in the first place come from? Uh, I'll start that story just leading in. Uh, big fella, Nilo, he's always right, but there are some exceptions to it. So the big freeze beanie was an idea that my sister, my hubby, and I went to Nilo and we said, it's, it's time to raise a bit of dough. We've got this idea. The beanies, what do you think about it? Let's get 15,000 of these. are going to sell out the door. And he came back to me, absolutely not a chance. These are going to go nowhere. Um, but as he said, uh, last year alone, we raised over $3 million through these. They're 20 bucks. It's They're unbelievable. 20 bucks. Amazing. Coles and Bunnings. Uh, well done, guys. Yep. You, you can get them from there. Selling like hotcakes. You want to be involved. It's just... It's, it's one of the great community grassroots campaigns that I love. And when you see someone walking around with one of these on, you automatically... I go, good bloke. No doubt. mnd.org.au. Um, how's the overall going? Are we, are we getting somewhere? Are you hearing from the researchers that we're making some inroads here? 
Yeah, definitely. I think um, when Dad was diagnosed in 2013, there was just no hope. Uh, we've invested over $38 million. We're seeing progress, we're seeing momentum, and there's hope out there. So we just need everyone to continue yep. to back us. Get yep. these beanies on your head. It's cold, it's winter, and we know Good there's time. an answer out there. We just yeah. need people to back us until it, we find and, it. And it covers up my stupid haircut, which I really like. Oh, I think <laughs> <it> can <laughs> we... a lot better. As great as it is to have Becky, I do miss, I do miss Neil. I would have asked. I would have, I would have loved to have asked Neil. <laughs> How he thought the multi went tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, we couldn't have him here, but he has sent us in a message. Here it is. Here's Neil. Hi, guys. As always, I appreciate your support. And all your viewers of both the beating and dynamic enjoying the fight against MND. Andy. Ignore those other two. <laughs> I think you are okay, mate. <laughs> Dan, well done. We all knew you'd be a better TV performer than the performer. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not time, mate. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky, see you Monday. Great birthday. The big free thing. You'll be great, mate. No, he's dropping it up. <laughs> <laughs> don't bugger it up. Whatever you do, don't forget. It's, it's trending, Lou. It's trending. Check your local guides Monday afternoon on 7 all over Australia. We're going to be visiting with the clubs and they're going to be doing their bit. You're a superstar. Thanks, we Beck. say to you, every year, you and your people have done an amazing job. Keep going and anything we can do to help you, just let us know and we'll do our bit. Good on you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The big friends of the G, mnd.org today if you can't get to Bunnings or Coles. That is it. It's great to be back. Uh, we've got a massive show next week. One day before footy starts, we'll be back on Wednesday. Ross Oakley and the great... Wednesday Matthew... night next week. Wednesday night next week. Wednesday night. Ross Oakley, Matthew Richardson to join us on the show. Thanks for being back with us. We'll see you then.